Welcome to the EKG Guide if this is your first time, and welcome back if you're returning. So we're going through our EKG coding reference guide online, and we're going to we're looking at ventricular rhythms. Uh, today we're going to be looking at accelerated idioventricular rhythm, and you can find that under Part Two. Okay, so just go to that drop down. Now, if you don't have access, all you have to do is simply put this link into your search bar. You'll come to this page, enter your email, click submit check your email for confirmation you'll click a link and then you'll have access to it all right if you're returning you could do the same thing but you'll bypass that whole track okay so we finished part one where we looked at atrial abnormalities normal ekg we were looked at rhythms we've gone through sinus rhythms we've gone through junctional rhythms um, atrial flutter atrial fibrillation and now we're into ventricular rhythms so today we'll talk about accelerated idioventricular rhythm or AIVR so let's get started so accelerated idioventricular rhythm also known as accelerated ventricular rhythm okay or AIVR is a rhythm that occurs because the ectopic rate in the ventricular or some ectopic focus in the ventricles is exceeding that of the sinus node or that above it okay so let's take a look at what we mean here so imagine we have our heart here this is the right atrium the left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle our conduction system we'll draw out here here's our sinus node we have these internodal pathways an AV node a Bachmann bundle to the left atrium we have the his bundle we have the right bundle branch here we have a left bundle branch that subdivides into a left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle okay and these then uh, transmit an impulse to the cardiomyocytes so this is the normal conduction system right if we have a sinus rhythm it originates up here at the sinus node if we have a junctional rhythm or AV nodal region uh, rhythm it may originate from here when we talk about ventricular rhythms right it actually comes from outside of the conduction system okay so we'll notice that it may come from here okay and it may be one focus that is spreading a rhythm throughout the whole ventricle and maybe even propagates retrogradely up to the atria okay so that's pretty much what's going on here often if it's monomorphic that means it's coming from the same site so notice down here we have these wide complexes that all look the same all right meaning it's coming from the same area so we call that uh, monomorphic uh, in morphology okay meaning it has one appearance notice that these complexes down here are wide okay so these QRS complexes are wide here you may notice okay so look at all these they're more than three of those small boxes which is 120 milliseconds okay so if it reaches that we consider it wide and that's because it's not transmitting down the normal conduction pathway or there may sometimes be widening of the QRS complex because of maybe a pre-excited pathway or some aberrant conduction that's been going on so the proposed mechanism is that there's some enhanced autoimmunticity. Remember the sinus rhythm, it has that intrinsic rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute in general. In this AV junctional region, it tends to be between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay? And when you get down here, anything originating tends to have a rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute, okay? And we use these because it helps to differentiate what, how we name the rhythms, okay? As we saw with the junctional rhythms, they have different names based on the rate. And the same thing here with these ventricular rhythms. So if we look at the rate here, okay, if we were to count the, or def, how to find the rate here, we would see that we know from beginning to end this is 10 seconds because it's a standard 12 lead EKG. If you multiply that by six, it's 60 seconds, which we know is one minute. So if we count the complexes, multiply by six, we can find the rate in beats per minute. So let's do that here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and maybe 13, okay? Because you can see that T wave there as well. So 13 times six, is about 78 beats per minute okay so as you can see we have 
these complexes, so let's write that here, 78 beats per minute is the rate we found, okay? And notice that this rhythm is quite regular, okay? Meaning that there's no irregular irregularity to it, and these intervals between these complexes are quite the same. So from one R wave to the next, we call that an R to R interval. And notice that these R to R intervals are pretty much the same. They're occurring at pretty much equidistant intervals. So we call this a regular rhythm. So we have a regular rhythm, and notice that there are no P waves preceding these complexes, okay? So if you look at these complexes, there are no P waves coming before it. Lead two and V1 tend to be good ones to look for it. Now there may be P waves that are occurring here, okay? And that may be from retrograde conduction. And notice the same thing down in V1, right? No complexes. Now there may be a little bit of P waves occurring at this area down here, but no P waves preceding it. So you have no P waves that are preceding that these wide complexes. So we said we have wide QRS complexes. We have a regular rhythm and we have a rate at about 78 beats per minute. No P waves preceding, but we may have some P waves that are coming almost after the QRS complex within the ST segment. And that may be because, say, imagine you have an impulse originating from here. It's conducting slow cell-to-cell -cell depolarization, widening the QRS complex, and maybe it then conducts retrogradely, okay, and actually activates the atria, and that's why we see those P waves, okay? So let's look at the EKG findings we have here. It could be regular or mildly irregular ventricular rhythm between 40 and 60 beats per minute, okay? So notice when you have a rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute, we call this a ventricular rhythm, okay? When you have a rate between 40 and 100 beats per minute, we call this an accelerated ventricular, idioventricular rhythm. When you have one over 100 beats per minute wide, we call this ventricular tachycardia, okay? So similarly to how we named our junctional rhythms, it really depends on the intrinsic rate and how we define it. Okay, so because this rate is at 78 beats per minute, it's below that ventricular tachycardic rate, but above that intrinsic rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute that you may see in that idioventricular rhythm. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So we have a regular rhythm, a rate between that. You want at least three complexes, at least that's how we define it here. If you have at least three wide QRS complexes, which pretty much all of these are wide, then that helps to define it. So we have at least three. They tend to have similar morphology, which we see here, okay? Now, you may see fusion beats or capture beats, but this tends to be seen more with ventricular tachycardia. In fact, that is one of the key things that helps differentiate it from a supraventricular wide complex tachycardia, okay? And again, we'll get into that in another lecture. So we have a wide QRS complex, okay? We have no P waves proceeding, a regular rhythm, a rate between that. And that's what defines this accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Now, associated conditions include the reperfusion phase after an acute MI or myocardial infarction. So that is post-thrombolysis. And this is the most common time you tend to see it. We don't tend to do much with it. It's just kind of a, the most common rhythm we see after someone has that. It's commonly associated with an increase in vagal tone. As you can expect, if vagal tone increases, maybe you're exciting one of these ectopic foci in the ventricles causing it to take over the and pace the heart, okay? Or a decrease of sympathetic tone can also be, lead to it. Now there's drug toxicity that can lead to it, digoxin, cocaine, and some other uh, medications. Electrolyte abnormalities, cardiomyopathy, people have that heart disease can cause it, congenital heart disease, myocarditis, um, ROSC or return of spontaneous circulation, you may see it following cardiac arrest and even in the athletic heart, okay? so pretty much when the athletic heart slows down so much, the sinus node slows down, okay? Because you have that increase in vagal tone and maybe an ectopic foci in the ventricles takes over. But the main one you want to remember, the main things from this lecture, okay, uh, is that this is the most common after uh, acute myocardial infarction, 
Okay, it's a wide complex. The rate is between 60, 40, and 100 beats per minute. Okay, you want at least three complexes. Okay, and it's a regular rhythm. You tend to not see P waves, but they may be uh, either buried within the QRS complex or come after from retrograde conduction. Okay, and remember, AV dissociation is a key thing that we use to uh, diagnose ventricular tachycardia if we can see it. Um, and again, remember this rhythm often post mi is usually well tolerated it's benign and tends to be self-limited to the patient okay so again just to hit on the fo the key points originates from the ventricles all right this area in the ventricles takes over pacemaking activity imagine it coming from one ectopic foci slow cell to cell depolarization causing widening of our qrs complex so wide it comes at a rate between 40 and 100 beats per minute okay remember the rates define it above 100 would be ventricular tachycardia tends to be irregular but may have some mild irregularity to it and and these are the main things okay often post mi well tolerated benign and tends to be self-limited well that's the end of this lecture i hope you learned something now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on YouTube there's another hundred more than a hundred about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book so it's over 30 hours of video now there's a number of practice material that i continue to upload there okay we'll have practice questions coming soon uh, so all of that's available again this is separate from all the free material that you get already okay so this is more high yield stuff this is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at mayo clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um, i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process i wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what i struggled with going and learning through ekg so again from beginner to advanced level with this course uh, you get the book the calipers 
the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.